FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and we can never say enough about cryptocurrencies. You know we follow them daily, constantly, have written numerous papers, articles about it. Uh, We want to bring you the latest news, what's happening there. You saw the recent retracement. Bitcoin was up to close to 19,500. Now it's right around 86, 8,700 as we speak. Well, there's a lot going on in the space. We were at the North American Bitcoin conference, close to 5,000 people attended. So this cryptocurrency trend, it's a real trend. It's a future trend that's happening now. It's not going away. Doesn't matter the volatility. The volatility actually is good in this space because it increases individual investors' knowledge and their awareness of the blockchain and what's going on. Hey, we had Frank Holmes on a while back. Frank, uh, your chairman of Hive Blockchain Technologies Limited as well as uh, CEO of Global Investors. And hey, we're thrilled to have you back on the show. It's great to be with you. So since we last spoke, a lot's been happening, not just uh, with Hive Blockchain, but also in the cryptocurrency space. So before we get down to Hive, just comment on what you've seen happen in the past two months with the, you know, the rapid rise of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, and then rapid decrease. Is this something we should have expected? Well, I think to a certain degree, um, it was started in the beginning of this year, uh, is, the, is the, the concern when I'm traveling around the world. And the one thought process is the G20 finance ministers function like a cartel. And prior to 2008, they used to be both synchronized global growth and trade. And since then, it's synchronized tax and regulation. And the concern over Bitcoin and be able to tax and regulate um, is is sort of an orchestration of what takes place. So I, that's one sort of conspiracy uh, theory. The other one for me was was what took place when the announcement that the Senate committee and Congress are going to meet regarding cryptocurrencies with the SEC and uh, Chicago uh, Mercantile. And I thought that that announcement on that date, which was which took place last week, uh, we just saw nothing but negative news come out uh, everywhere and concern of it. And they basically had it talk down. Uh, and I think this very positive uh, that meeting's taken place. It's behind us. Uh, and it looks like the, the cryptocurrencies are getting a base. I think that uh, the government is trying to find a way to regulate some of these crazy ICOs we, you and I were talking about earlier mm-hmm. at this uh, event in Miami that just make no rhyme or sense. And, um, uh, and they are basically marketing to raise capital as a security without the normal disclosure as a security. So I think if those things get cleaned up, it will help legitimize the industry uh, as an asset class. Uh, and, and I think that the, the fears out of China is that China is just very worried about money leaving the country and losing control uh, of the currency. Uh, and I think that that's part of the crackdown. I also think it's part of an environmental issue because most of the cheap energy that the Chinese have been mining Bitcoin have come from coal. And coal is polluting the cities of Shanghai and Beijing. And I think a lot of the citizens and politicians are fed up with this uh, soot that's taking place. And there's been a big pushback and trying to go as electrical as possible. Uh, And so shutting them down is probably the best thing ever. And now at that conference, there was lots of rumors that the Chinese are looking for finding other companies that represent them to expand into Canada, to do crypto mining in in Sweden, et cetera. But we'll see how it happens that unfolds. Yeah, your point about them trying to talk down cryptos, I saw two major articles in the New York Times, literally within three days. One of them was, worries grow that the price of Bitcoin is being propped up. And then you had all of the major banks in the U.S. cut off the use of credit cards to purchase cryptos. Then you had a scholarly release of a paper that examined the Mt. Gox. And if you're not familiar with Mt. Gox, that was a Bitcoin exchange that evidently fraud was rampant there. 
and it was used to drive up the Bitcoin exchange rate from $150 to $1,000 in just two months prior to the collapse of Mt. Gox. And just a lot of negative press. You know, a couple of six months ago, Frank, the press kind of treated uh, Bitcoin as an oddity. They never really took it seriously and they just pretty much uh, it was like patronizing their coverage now their coverage has changed dramatically from from last year have you noticed that oh yeah i really noticed that um, uh, all the publications cnbc had special crypto pages etc um bloomberg uh, it's always showing up in their top 10 most uh, read stories. If they print something on cryptocurrency, it immediately gets traction. Uh, and so the Bloomberg uh, writers get bonus based on how many people click through and write their stories. So yeah. there's an incentive for them to cover it. Uh, and also, they're the marketplace is hungry to try to understand what's taking place. But really significant, uh, I was at Harvard last week with a group of CEOs from 100, from uh, from 80 countries. There's 180 of us. And we meet every week and we share peer-to-peer -peer learning. And there was a whole presentation on blockchain uh, technology and why it's so significant. And, and basically validating that Bitcoin has woken up uh, blockchain is, uh, as, a, as a catalyst for massive change the way email woke up the Internet. And, uh, and it was trying not to talk negative regarding to it. It's, yes, some of these ICOs we've talked about will be bad, but this is life in, in it's an emergent uh, industry. Uh, and I think that that's what's really important. And, and all the companies, there's three, over 3,000 patents filed using blockchain. Um, I think Microsoft is looking at with Ethereum uh, as a backbone for theirs. Uh, and I think it just only lends itself that we're going to see more change take place. But I think it's very positive. Once those meetings behind us with Congress and Senate, I thought they were very constructive. Uh, and I think the, the thing that did hurt the coins from the hackers was that Mt. Gox was, they had that in Japan. It's a big scandal. Um, and so I, there's no doubt that only added to the, the, the difficulties in the marketplace. But hopefully, you know, this, this is behind and I see Ethereum is still doing exceptionally well. We corrected from its highs, uh, but just under 900. Uh, we started mining Ethereum in October at 300. Uh, so it's still a, a massive uh, profit margin for us. Yeah, and hey, let's let's talk about Hive blockchain technologies. So you're a major backer of it. You've gotten an amazing amount of institutional interest and support. Uh, recently raised 200 over 200 million dollars uh, to further expand the company yeah it's a, really a thrill uh, and to see what's taking place and, and a lot of it's happened in Canada uh, Canada has a different formation of capital for venture capital and prior to this it was all owned by Silicon Valley and you had to have big checks five million dollar limited partnership minimums to participate in that space or even hedge funds who were trading uh, all of a sudden now hive has woken up that over a billion dollars being raised for this crypto world. Uh, and I think that that's another big catalyst, which we're going to see more opportunities, artificial intelligence being applied to it, uh, machine learning being applied to the space. So it's, it's to me, it's very exciting. And Hive has been definitely the leader in it. We did three financings. As you mentioned, we raised over $200 million in three months uh, with launching this company. And each time was at a higher stock price. Uh, so therefore, each financing was accretive. When we do the performance uh, based on what we were mining and by by uh, September of this year, we, we don't have revenue of over $200 million uh, and cash flow should be close to $100 million. So this is a real business. And even today, we've expanded our growth in Sweden. Uh, there's another level, another major expansion taking place in uh, end of March, which will make us uh, and almost double us again. Uh, so it's very exciting and it's immediate cash flow. But what we did see was Ethereum surged 400%, but the cost of mining Ethereum went up 60%. So it still left these incredible, attractive profit margins. Uh, this big correction though, which is so important, it shakes out all the people that come running in to mine the coins at the last minute and their electrical bills are gonna be too high. They're not, they don't have the profit margin uh, that's there. So they'll leave. Um, we're fortunate that we have 
have uh, the cheapest electricity in the world. Uh, we have the best uh, partners, Genesis Mining. Uh, and so we're able to have great economies of scale to participate as this infrastructure play globally for crypto mining. Hey, and by the way, speaking of costs um, and such, uh, did you hear about the Russian nuclear scientists that just got busted? They were using the supercomputers at the uh, Russian nuclear labs to mine Bitcoin. <laughs> and I, I had heard a rumor of this several months ago, and I just said, yeah, well, maybe, who knows? And then sure enough, like a couple months later, these guys get arrested. Obviously, if you're stealing your employer's computer time, uh, your costs just don't get any lower than that, but the risks uh, might be a little uh, unacceptable. I, I guess they didn't give the government senior person the cut. That's why they got caught. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting enough, Venezuela has been that way, too. It was shown up uh, that they were mining coins to try to help with their own, and they would go after anyone that was locally because they have cheap electricity there uh, to mm. to mine. So the, the government now is you know coming up with their own cryptocurrency to find a solution to their problems. Uh, and, and I thought that was interesting, that conference where Dash spoke about, that they're going to become the proxy, their goal as a currency for the uh, cannabis industry, uh, which is also mm. booming in Canada, uh, especially oh, medicinal yeah. cannabis. Uh, as public companies, etc., uh, and they're going to do Venezuela. Uh, but you know, Venezuela is just fraught with narco money, and so I, I just hopefully it doesn't really hurt the Dash coin. Yeah, you know, it's narco money. It's a kleptocracy. There's no rule of law there anymore. Fake elections. You know, you can't just solve all your country's economic problems just by coming up with a cryptocurrency. It's like you know, presto. Now uh, everything's fine. You know, socialism, uh, socialism and cryptocurrency, I'm not sure are really compatible. Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I totally agree. I, I think the other part was in, in India pushes out the cryptocurrency and they're anti. However, they want to have their own cryptocurrency to stop all the corruption. Uh, <laughs> Russia wants to have their own <laughs> cryptocurrency. So there's something happening. And how, as I said, it's early in this emergent industry, how it's going to unfold. Just think of Facebook as only in the past decade. You know, who knew yeah. that they were going to be around 15, 20 years ago? Hey, you know, that story of all these uh, governments trying to create their own cryptocurrency. It just reminds me of that old saying, don't steal. The government hates competition. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, true. so, so from your standpoint here, uh, you just keep adding capacity to mine more coins effectively. And you're going to be by, uh, in several months, quick months, these months moves really fast now, but in a very short period of time, you'll be producing Bitcoin. Uh, is there any other curiosity or plans to go for any of the other cryptos? Yeah, there is. Um, and the big part is we are we have been mining some of the other Ethereum based coins. The other what's really important is it realizes that most of these ICOs are on the backbone of Ethereum. So Correct. if they're gonna be who's gonna win this race, like the internet boom, uh, who's gonna win? We I don't know. But I do know that they're predominantly using Ethereum backbone. Therefore, they have to mine Ethereum. So Ethereum has a great positioning power. Right. And you know, like you said, I think uh, the regulation is an important part of the market. I think they've the governments have hesitated because they see this as another gold rush, possibly bigger than even Silicon Valley. The whole computerization trend, you know, smartphones. This potentially is bigger than smartphones. So as much as they want to regulate tax and control everything, you know, they don't want to kill a potential goose that will be laying golden eggs into the uh, into the millennium for them. And I think it's it's been healthy because it's forced them to hold back and only go after the most egregious cases of which there's right. been a few. Absolutely. And and they're on them. You know, you talk to some of these special agents, et cetera, and, and they know the bad guys are uh, and they know when they're going to make a mistake and they'll do a takedown. Just like in the um, Mount Gau uh, deal, uh, they went to Athens and they took down uh, the person who to try to touch that money. Uh, and so I, I think that it's healthy that, that to have people keying it up. And just like in the gold industry, you know, they, that uh, the, the gold industry is fought with with narcos in Panama uh, buying uh bricks of gold, um, shipping across in donkeys into Colombia, uh, pretending that they're, they're going through a refinery, and then they bring them into the central bank to have them cleanse, uh, to cleanse money. You know, And then all of a sudden, that makes gold bad? No, because these bad guys have found a way uh, to try to cleanse their money. And the best part is, you got to stop them from doing that. Uh, and 
And I think that doesn't mean that gold's going to go away for beautiful jewelry. Um, yeah. Gold usually has this big rally, which we're going through right now. Why? Because it's Chinese New Year and the Chinese are big buyers of it. So I think we can't confuse uh, the crypto world with narcos. Yes, they're going to come into just like gold in Panama. Uh, they're, they're separate. Hey, I think somebody said it at the, uh, at the Bitcoin conference, you know, Bitcoin blockchain can be used for good, can be used for evil. But one thing that is true is that the blockchain itself is immutable and uncorruptible. You cannot, no one's figured out yet how to corrupt that blockchain because, you know, you got all those self-replicating public ledgers all over the place. Nobody knows how to corrupt it. And that is the key to its uh, its future viability. It enables us to solve a lot of problems in the world that formerly were believed to be pretty much uh, insoluble. Right, totally. So, uh, and, I, and I think the whole positive part is they're going to find a way that these tokens can become a, a security and trade 24-7. I think these stock exchanges from going to the conference you and I were at is, is for the regulators to try to find a way to allow 24-7 trading because that's what millennials want. Um, the oh, other yeah. part was I think that this big correction – doesn't it's not as painful uh, because a lot of these millennials believe they're changing the world and it's a cash economy. Uh, I was at a conference where Poly Capital co founder said that Ethereum has created 10,000 millionaires, kids with knapsacks, 10,000 millionaires. Now, John Chambers spoke of this event, the CEO, and I mentioned uh, earlier at Harvard last year, and his comments were that he created 10,000 millionaires in the 90s with all of his acquisitions and growth, but he could never do it today with all the regulations. And then out of nowhere, in four years, Ethereum increased 10,000 millionaires. Uh, so there's something that's happening that's very positive and, and, and how they function. And they're not, you don't see them very few running out to buy Lamborghinis even though people were there and they're trying to sell them. <laughs> yes. uh, and that was <laughs> and a yachts. joke to them. But I, I think the concept, like we were talking earlier about airline tickets, now that's a digital currency. Uh, you fly mm. and they give you a credit point and you can call up and use your computer and you can use your phone and digitally you can get dollar value for that flight and discounts and travel and the hotels. So I think that someone's going to unlock it and no one's figured it out yet, but this is where the formation of capital model has shown ICOs last year attracted three and a half um, billion dollars that would normally go into micro cap financing went into these ICOs. Uh, and what happens when they unlock that there's a one currency that's, that's compatible and, and tradable with all the airlines that's a currency that you can use it 24 seven. I don't know the solution to it, but it's being worked on and it'll happen. Yeah, that and hey, preventing uh, counterfeit parts, airline parts, counterfeit drugs. Those are some applications like, you know, counterfeit drugs are a horrible problem, you know, especially when they're inferior grade. You don't know. You can't tell them apart from the real one, from the fake one. But with the blockchain, it's like you can keep track of every single block every single lot of uh, pharmaceuticals from when they were manufactured to where they wind up at your local Walmart or CV, uh, you know, Walgreens or CVS, you know, every single step of where they went and therefore the potential to infect the supply chain gets greatly diminished. There's just so many applications here. So it's got to be exciting that you're in on the ground floor here. I'm so thrilled about being an also first mover advantage. We're looking at other Nordic countries. Uh, we've had invitations in Canada to go and talk to uh, how to take stranded electricity in northern parts of Canada. That's similar to northern parts of Sweden. But never go tap electricity that is uh, coal-based uh, or oil-based. It's going to be hydro or it's going to be geothermal. It's going to be stranded where an old pulp and paper mill is shut down. There's no employment. Uh, this would create employment or an old mine. Uh, so we're very excited about this sort of build out. But the math is so compelling. And so it's sad to see the stock come down with the currencies and the sentiment. But our balance sheet is over 50 million in cash and our, and our cash flow is positive and growing. Uh, and I, you think of something, we throw up $100 million of cash flow based on the currencies, what they're trading at today and the cost of mining. Well, that's worth at least 15 times. Um, and what would that mean? So the stock has the great potential to to triple from here. And so I feel it's actually a safer bet today based on the balance sheet and how many companies were, how many coins were mining. And our growth profile from here to September is extremely exciting. Hey, and uh, 
as opposed to holding it as a proxy for cryptocurrencies. It makes a lot of sense. You don't have to worry about your digital wallet getting hacked or your exchange getting hacked. You know, you guys are there. And I guess security is an issue, but that's probably going to diminish over time, I would expect, as as these the awareness of the need for it to really becomes obvious. I mean, you, every uh, every week you see something happen. So it's definitely something that uh, you need to be aware of, but it's being worked on as we speak. Hey, take a look at the website. It's fascinating. Hiveblockchain.com. You'll find all the info there. As far as uh, where it's trading on the exchanges, uh, on the uh, TSX Venture, you'll find it under Hive, H-I-V-E dot V. And on the OTC, it's H-V-B-T-F. Frank, hey, it's been a pleasure. If anybody wants any more information, any other place to go? You know, I, I think the website is rich with content. And uh, myself, I have at usfunds.com a blog that goes out weekly, and I comment on my global travels and, and the cryptocurrency world and my observations as a money manager looking at the space. So they go to usfunds.com and sign up for Frank Talk. It makes it easy to look at. But really, Hive uh, website is rich with content and informative. Absolutely. And you'll definitely want to sign up for the email list because it's a really neat way to keep up on what's happening with the blockchain and the cryptocurrencies and as it affects Hive. Definitely a really interesting play. Frank, thanks so much for coming on and being a sponsor. And we'll talk to you again real soon. All right. Happy investing, my friend. Take care. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.